Hey, hey, you guys, and welcome back to my channel. For those of you who are new here, welcome. My name is Chelsea, and I am an IVF mom to an 11 month old baby girl. Now, it took my husband and I about five years to get pregnant with our daughter, and that was after IVF, like I mentioned, but we also did some other fertility treatments before IVF, so we know firsthand how expensive IVF and fertility treatments can be. So in today's video, I wanted to share with you guys what you can do to pay for all these fertility treatments. And I just wanted to give a little bit of insight into what we did, but mostly just let you know what I wish we would have done. Go ahead and keep watching for some helpful tips and helpful insight that can make it so that you don't make the same mistakes that we made. Okay, so the very first thing you're going to do is you're going to take a minute to realize that this is just your lot in life. Doesn't happen to everyone, right? Not everyone struggles to get pregnant. It's about one in eight couples at this point right now that struggle to conceive within a year, I believe is the time frame. So you're part of that club maybe, and that sucks. But there's a great community here online to help support you and that's what I'm here for today. But I really think that this is step one of this process. You gotta realize that, yes, this sucks. It's not fair that you have to spend money like this to get pregnant. And trust me, I had to deal with my own <laughs> resentment towards this, but this is just, it is what it is. So just accept that and then now understand that you have the ability to take control of how you're going to tackle this challenge. Let's just call it a challenge. <laughs> the challenge is to get pregnant. Another thing to do is just take a minute to be grateful that there are procedures like IVF and other fertility treatments and other ways to achieve pregnancy or ultimately your baby, growing your family and getting your take home baby. All right. So after you've taken time to realize that and move on, be, you know, grateful, just move forward. Now is when you should check in with your insurance. Reach out to them in whatever way you feel you need to, to really dig into what your benefits cover. Now, most insurance companies, I would say, do not cover IVF. However, there are some out there that do. There are some companies that you could look into that have insurance benefits that cover IVF. So one that I can think of off the top of my head is Starbucks. Now I'm not sure exactly what they cover, but I do know that their insurance covers some benefits of IVF and I'm pretty sure you don't even have to work full time. Don't quote me on that, but that is what I've heard. So I'm going to go ahead and link below a bunch of resources that I'm going to be touching on through this whole video, but one of those will be companies nationwide that do have um, insurance benefits that cover fertility treatments. So our insurance company, just to give you some insight here, our insurance company did not cover anything. Um, and a lot of the procedures and things that we did for IVF and fertility treatments didn't even go towards our deductible, which we have a high deductible plan. So even though we spent over $30,000 um, to get pregnant, essentially, most of that did not even go towards our high deductible. So really just do your due diligence and ask as many questions as you could possibly think of to your insurance company so you can figure out exactly how much they'll cover versus how much you're going to have to pay out of pocket. The third thing I have down on my list of what you can do to pay for IVF is start a budget. So. You may have to get a consultation first with your chosen fertility clinic of how much the fertility treatments that you're going to be needing, let's say IVF, um, how much that's going to cost for you. I would say at a minimum, you're going to be paying $10,000. However, this is a varied number for so many different reasons and for so many different people. The cost of IVF varies from state to state. It varies depending on what kinds of medications you need to take with your IVF cycle. There are so many factors that go into this, honestly. That's why you'll never really be able to get a clear answer from people about how much you should plan on paying for IVF because it's just different depending on who you are. But our IVF, just IVF alone with PGS testing and the transfer and all of that stuff, um, I can link exact numbers to my IVF cycle and how much that costs. 
I can link that up above here and as well in the description box below. But like I said, total, we spent about $30,000 on all of our fertility treatments and testing. So if you're gonna do a consultation with your fertility clinic, that will cost, I would say, at least $150 just to do that. So you may need to start a budget and first budget in that initial consultation. So I would just say that living by a budget is huge and I will link some resources for budgeting down in the description box as well. If you don't have a budget, you're not gonna know what your expenses are and how you can cut back in order to put more money towards saving for IVF. Now, if you have a budget, you're going to be able to see where you can cut back and what changes you can make to your expenses in order to put a little bit more money towards your savings for IVF or other fertility treatments. In addition to this, you're going to be able to see how soon you can reach that savings goal. So if you're wanting to have a baby in the next couple of years, I would assume most of you, if you're watching this video, it's because you're wanting to have a baby as soon as possible and you've already been waiting long enough. So you need to see how much you need to save for and how long that's gonna take to get there. And you really can only do that with a budget. And let's say you figured out that it's gonna take you two years based off of your expenses right now and where you can cut back and what your numbers are in your budget. It's gonna take you two years to save to be able to do IVF. Well, the only other option is to increase your income. So what you can do then is just take on a few side hustles. One, two, Three, however many side hustles you can do, especially if you don't have kids at this time, you can spend a lot of your time outside of your main job doing side hustles. And there are so many things that you can do, you guys. I will link, again, below options for side hustles. One thing I am going to advise against, just based off of my own experience, as far as a side hustle goes, is don't join an MLM. I don't wanna get into a whole thing here, but I really don't believe in the MLM structure. If you don't know what that is, that's multi-level marketing. And that's what I did in order to have a side hustle in order to save more money for IVF. And it just really didn't work out well for me because that MLM structure just isn't really built for success, especially if you're just trying to do it as a side hustle in order to save for something like IVF. So just based off of my own experience, I would not rely on an MLM to help you meet your savings goals for IVF. Another thing you should do while you're working your side hustles is look into grants because we were able to get a grant for covering $1,500 worth of our medications, which was so helpful. And this grant was suggested to us by our fertility clinic. She looked at our numbers, she looked at our treatment plan and everything. And, and when I say she, I'm talking about the financial counselor that our fertility clinic has which is so helpful. Um, but she took a look at our case and she was able to recommend a couple different grants that we could apply for. So reach out to your fertility center, maybe reach out to a Facebook group, an IVF support Facebook group. Um, I will link some options for grants down below as well and take some time to fill out applications. There is a chance that some of these applications could have application fees. I didn't see any grant programs that had application fees, but I'm just saying that could be a possibility. Um, it also does take a lot of time to fill out some of these applications. So just want you to understand that as well, but it could be so worth it if you are able to qualify for a grant. Most of these grants are based off of income, but some are more like a scholarship basis, if that makes sense. Not necessarily based off of income, but more just case by case. That is one thing I really wish we would have done more is applied for grants, but we were kind of just like in a rush. So we just made a lot of mistakes financially, I think, when we did our IVF cycle. So this is again why I wanted to share this information with you guys so you don't make the same mistakes that we made. Now another thing you could do is you could hold a fundraiser. So I have heard of people holding like Instagram auctions where they reach out to different brands that are willing to donate and then they'll create um, an account where followers can place bids on the items that are donated and then all that money, all the proceeds go towards an IVF cycle for someone. So I saw this happen just recently and I can link the Instagram that that was done on. Um, it was really fun because I was able to, we got the company that I work for, we got this email and someone was asking if we could donate product for this very type of auction. And I was really excited that we were able to contribute to that. And they were able to raise, I think, $9,000. So again, I will link that down below. And I'm sure there are other ways people have held fundraisers 
We did not hold a fundraiser for our IVF cycle, but I really liked this social media auction type of fundraiser. I thought that was really cool. Another way that is similar that I've seen people raise money to do IVF to be able to pay for that is crowdfunding. So something like GoFundMe um, is a great way that some people have been able to raise money for their IVF cycle. We did not do this either. Um, we were not comfortable with this. If someone would have started one for us, it might have been okay, I guess, but um, we just didn't feel comfortable starting one of these um, on our own. However, if someone were to start one of a crowdfunding, like a GoFundMe for IVF, like I would support that. It doesn't really matter who has started it. It is just a very vulnerable thing to like reach out and be like, hey guys, can you help us fund our IVF? But hey, you do what you gotta do. So the last thing I wanted to mention as an option to pay for IVF is a payment plan. So a lot of fertility clinics will actually set you up on a payment plan so that you can pay every like three months and they'll even do that without interest. So again, just check with your clinic to see what their options are. And another thing you could do is you could ask them for a discount. I mean, what are they gonna say, no? And then it's like, okay, it doesn't hurt to ask. I mean, you could just say, hey, do you have any discounts available? Or do they have any grants available within their own fertility center? It's worth a shot, right? Now, as I mentioned, Eric and I made some mistakes, we feel, when we paid for IVF. And we can share that with you in another video. We can sit down and talk about exactly like what we did to pay for IVF and what we wish we wouldn't have done. And we can go into a little bit more detail. So like this video and let me know if that's something that you guys wanna hear is sort of our journey to paying for IVF. I have done a couple videos on my channel about how much IVF actually costs and fertility treatments and all of those numbers. But if you want to hear how we actually ended up paying for IVF, um, what we did, then yeah, let me know in the comments below or give this video a thumbs up. That will let me know that you guys are down for that. So I hope this video was helpful for you guys. If you are looking for more IVF tips, I have some right over here. Go ahead and check out this video on how you can be successful with IVF. And thank you so much for watching you guys and I'll catch you in my next video. Bye.